The 3x5 initiative was hugely significant in galvanizing action against HIV in the African region. I have to say it was also a big psychological moment for those of us who were working in HIV in the era where treatment was not available and we just had to accept that people were dying in such large numbers. So it enabled us in low-income countries with weak health systems to be able to put people on antiretroviral therapy who had not dreamt of having this, this access before. Yes, there certainly have been some tremendous uh, barriers. I remember when I was in charge of the Botswana HIV AIDS program, when I managed that program, every week the laboratory would send me the list of people who had been diagnosed with HIV AIDS. They were very small in number. But such was a concern about stigma that I used to lock it in a drawer in my desk. So I kept that key and only myself and the head of the laboratory had access to that list because it had people's names on it. So stigma was a huge, uh, huge barrier at that time. As well, in terms of the prevention, of course, there were all the taboos about openly speaking about uh, sexual behavior. The stigma is very much less uh, today than it was in the past. The people who are living with HIV AIDS and the networks that they've established to support each other, to encourage each other by their own actions of coming out, I think have played an extremely uh, important role in enabling this. We, we have seen though that uh, there is a difference in uh, the stigma or in the ability to face up to the stigma between men and women. Uh, we have many more women living with HIV AIDS. In fact, the deaths among men are rather more. I've noticed in my own family, since I come from Southern Africa, where we have a high prevalence rate, that uh, women who are living with HIV AIDS are much more able to come out in the family and we accept that this is a person who is on treatment. Whereas among the men, I've had several of my male relatives die of HIV AIDS because they are only able to come out when it's very, very late to tell people that uh, they're living with HIV, they need treatment, and several of them have done so too late. We need to always remember that even in the, on the African continent, only just over half of people who need antiretroviral therapy have access. So people still do die of, uh, of AIDS in, in, in the African region today, which is a great tragedy. There are certain groups uh, that are affected by HIV AIDS for whom we still have barriers in ensuring acceptance. So um, young girls are particularly at risk and the data still shows that they're very much more at risk than boys of their age. Men who have sex with men particularly still are not having access to services in the way that uh, they should. They're very much stigmatized. Those are some of the, the problems that we have to overcome. Uh, one of the most exciting developments is the availability now of kits for self-testing. So it's been a very, very long road for people living with HIV, for the international community, for those of us who work in HIV AIDS. I believe we're in a very, very positive trajectory now. We understand many of the factors that drive HIV risk. We've learned a lot about delivering treatment and the issue is out there very much more openly addressed in the community and I'm very, very hopeful that we'll be able to get there in terms of uh, controlling this problem.